So now I'm going to talk about how to make a table in Excel. And it doesn't really have to be super fancy or super formal, but it kind of fits some criteria that I personally like and also fit what you normally see in printed publications. A lot of times journals or other sources, will, will, they'll have certain guidelines you have to follow. And if you've ever seen a really bad table, you kind of know what to avoid. So I pasted the summary of my regression to output for my autocorrelation example and I just put it in Excel here and this is exactly how it comes out of, of R. And I did the same regression actually in the software eViews um, which if you've ever used it it gives you you can estimate an equation and sometimes you actually see exactly this in a paper and it's really tacky and it doesn't look good it also shows that you might not actually know what you're doing in terms of econometrics right so I did this regression in eViews it's the same coefficients and I am going to um, put it right here in Excel as well. Right? So I've got two versions of the same equation. Um, eViews is a little bit easier to look at, um, but in R you, you have this. And notice that this is actually not in cells. Everything is in in just one big block. right? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually turn it into individual cells first. And so if you look, it's actually separated by some sort of spaces, um, and a lot of times more than one space. So what I do is I will actually replace space space by space alright and I just do this a couple times right? there's probably a better way to do it and I don't know and actually don't care what it is but um, so now I've got everything is separated by a single space and then I go to text to columns and I'm going to delimit it by um, everything possible I think it's actually space delimited but I put every option just in case and this is kind of what we get and it's kind of ugly here alright and so what you'd actually have to do is line everything up a little bit um, and so forth and so eventually what you want is to have everything in these columns like this all right and so uh, I'm going to show you on the eView stuff just because it's easier but uh, right now you you have all this stuff we're only going to use some of it and we want to have it nicely lined up where we have all the things that we need uh, nicely organized and then we're going to um, turn them into what makes a nice table so I've got here I've got my uh, stuff that I want um, already in tab format because that's what eViews does. All right, but it's the same coefficients. You can see that it's really rounded. Um, it's too many decimal places. It's got more things than what we need because remember we have the coefficient estimate. We're only going to want one of the, these three, either standard error or t-statistic or probability. Standard error is the most mind-intensive if you put it in a paper because people actually have to do two things. They have to divide, get this number, which you didn't give them, and say, is that number more than two? Right, and that's more work, but it's useful because you can actually test other things than is the coefficient difference from zero. Right, but t statistics already, you know, you can compare it to two or, or not, and then probability is the least mind intensive because you have to actually, it just tells you is it significant at five percent, ten percent, or in between or above. All right, so I've got my constant c, which is eView's thing, and then this is what I called my variable when I did it. Right, so here is my. Uh, uh, output, right? And sometimes you'll, like I said, you will see this, and somebody will just put a big. Uh, one actually bad thing you could do is somebody will actually put a table, and again, do not do this, but people do this. All right, they will actually put a uh, box around every cell that we have in here, right? And, and that's really, really tacky. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make a nice table, and I'm going to put some simple lines around it too. So first of all, we want. I'm going to say let's round to three decimal places, and we'll keep the variables that we want. A lot of times you can put the constant above the variables. All right, that doesn't really matter, but usually in order the constant might come first. Eviews puts it at the end. And of all these things, I'm going to, I'm going to widen this out. Um, you have R squared and adjusted R squared. These are the most important ones. A lot of times you talk about standard errors, and introductory econometric students say like, well, here's standard errors. This is the standard error. This is the best one. Right? You don't see that actually published much. All right. Um, other ones, F statistic shows the significance of all variables, and the probability, and so forth. Uh, th that never winds up on the printed page. Sometimes you'll see the AIC or the Schwartz criterion, which is a goodness of fit criterion. Um, but for the most part, we're just going to use. Um, I'm going to in this case, I'm going to use the p value for this one. So we're going to have a coefficient and p value. And so first of all, we're going to open up a command, and then we're going to concatenate. All right, and that means to combine these. And I'm going to do a second command, which is to round this one. All right, and I'm going to round it to three decimal places. Now I say, well, what comes after the coefficient? I'm going to put in quotes, because again, that separates out what is 
uh, the, the text in there, right? And then I'm going to have space, open parentheses, close, and then th that's all that it's going to print in here, right? That's why the quotes are just separated. It's not going to be printed, all right? Then the, th the third component is going to be round again, and here I'm going to have, I said, p-value, and I'm going to round it to 3, all right? And finally, I am going to just put a closed parenthesis on there. And then I end my whole thing, because you can kind of see Excel will tell you that they all match. And here I have this. Now, you probably would go in and pad this with a couple decimal places. All right? If I do this with the t-statistic, maybe it's a little bit more straightforward. I will do d9. Then you won't have to pad. But here we have this. Right? Now, if I copy, I can have the same thing for my constant. Right, and again, I don't usually go in and, and put any quote uh, command to pad. I just go in and, and, and when it's in Word and in pad where I need to. But you can see here that I've got my um, coefficient and my t statistic. Right now, I'm going to give it a little bit of space. I should probably should have done in the first place. All right, but I'm going to name this here. All right, and then usually I'll call it constant. All right, and again, I can change the order if I want to. All right, and then what I might want to do is give it a header. Um, coefficient t statistic. All right, and so now I have a nice little uh, single column for all of these. Now I could also put r squared, and I'm not going to go in and, and make any kind of a, like a superscript or anything. I'm just going to call it that. And I'm going to use regular r squared today, even though you might want to use adjusted r squared um, later on. And again, see, there's too many decimal places. Sometimes you'll see like 12 decimals, and that's it's again part of it is doing it correctly, but part of it is also showing people that you know what you're doing. And a, a bad signal is putting too much too much output. A bad signal is not modifying what you've done, and another bad signal is not rounding when you need to. So um, you want to do something that shows that you're familiar with how econometrics is done, and so I'm going to round it here. All right, And you could also put maybe something like variable or something like that. All right, And so now we have... Um, you know, pretty much, you know, what we're, what you might have. In, in a time series, you usually don't have n, but you could put 101, because we lost two observations on our, our difference of a lag. But um, here is um, basically uh, just a few things you could put into a table. But notice we're not putting everything that's available, and a lot, a lot of times you wouldn't be expected to. So you should be aware that a lot of this stuff is output, but not done. All right. Again, the N, you know, it's good for micro, but people look at your sample size and they, they know how many years and how many quarters they can do the math, but let's just put N just to have a fifth thing here. All right. So we've got this, and we're starting to have a nice table. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font size. Now, tables, generally speaking, have sans serif fonts, and so I'm going to change this font uh, to Arial, and I, I personally do 8-point font. Um, it looks nice on the page, but generally speaking, you wouldn't want to use something like Times New Roman or, or, or Serif font. You want something that's kind of smoother right, and, and lighter looking. And so we have our, uh, you know, we have uh, something that will look nice on the page here. Um, another thing we're going to do is I'm going to bold this maybe. And then uh, also notice how uh, Excel tends to write justified numbers, but it doesn't read these as numbers, so I'm going to write, write justify this. Okay. So now I've got the start of a table. Now again, I'm not going to box this in. It, it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing to have your um, every cell boxed in. Normally, you would probably just do bottom borders for underneath the title or of each variable, the variable name or whatever goes in the column, the column title, and then right at the bottom. Okay. And so here we would have all our variables kind of clean looking. Um, maybe, you know, we could go in and, and uh, change what we're doing here. One thing I always do is make sure that you can paste, right? If, if you're worried about losing your command, you might have to paste to get rid of that formatting. But we have everything we need right here, right? Then, finally, outside of the table, I would usually put something like table one, you know, um, regression output or something like that. Give it a very simple name. All right, and if it's in a paper, again, people vary on this. You would maybe use a fancier font, something like Times New Roman or something that would match the text of your publication or your paper, right? But this is something you could just straight up paste in Word, um, and it, it looks a lot nicer um, than what the software just gives you. And also, it follows some conventions, including uh, size of font, type of font, uh, justifications, and so forth. Um, see, make sure here, 
So you can move that over a little bit. You could always look at it to make sure that it matches. But that's how I like to do it. It's very simple in terms of the text. Very limited use of lines. A lot of times uh, publications don't want any vertical lines at all. Right? So I avoided those entirely. But I've, uh, anybody who knows regression analysis would understand uh, what's significant and what is not, what variables are on there. Um, is this, variable, is this uh, regression have does it have much explanatory power and so forth right so I'm doing kind of two things uh, one is talking about the regression output itself like how to talk about regression output which involves a lot of times taking software output and putting it in Excel and making it look nice and then putting in a word and making it look nice but um, just the general idea is that when you make a table all tables have some universal uh, concepts to them right? including how to make them how to format them etc